As of January 2021, 20, there are 4.66 billion active Internet users worldwide, 59.5% of global population. Of this total, 92.6% access the Internet via mobile devices. Compared with the number in 2005, when only 16% of the population was Internet users, it is truly a remarkable development. However, there is a striking divide between the developed and developing countries in the use of Internet. According to the ITU, while Internet users in developed countries accounted for 86.6% in 2019, it was only 47% in developing countries. I believe that countries with limited capabilities and resources, either physical or human, are at a clear disadvantage when it comes to value creation through digital transformation. We are tragically suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic. In this dire situation, Internet connectivity has become integral in sharing information and exchanging ideas on how to cope with the current pandemic. The Internet and digital devices not only enhance human safety by monitoring and managing the virus transmission, but also provide an imperative lifeline for millions of people to maintain their livelihood by enabling remote working, e-learning, online shopping, and allowing them to access services and engage in countless communications. While struggling with the COVID-19 pandemic, however, we are experiencing a vaccine divide or COVID-19 divide between the developed and developing countries. Most developing countries are unable to procure necessary vaccine supplies, whereas some rich countries are holding vaccines for their own citizens. It has to be strongly urged by the international community that the practice of this predatory overbuying should be stopped and corrected to ensure affordable and equitable access to vaccines for all. Otherwise, the immunization gap will get wider between the rich and poor countries, manifesting and aggravating the already existing disparities among nations. The pandemic has had a profound and pervasive impact on our world, with presenting a dilemma on our system, not only in healthcare and economy, but as a whole. The dilemma has become apparent in the pandemic management as the policy of isolation has positive externalities in terms of healthcare while isolation has negative externalities for the economy. The common threat to humanity calls for global cooperation across all sectors and at all levels. In dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, we have to learn from the past. In this respect, we must pay very close attention to the recently published United Nations Secretary General's report of our common agenda. He strongly urges that now is the time to re-embrace global solidarity to work for the common good. This must include a global vaccination plan for affordable and equitable access to vaccines and the urgent steps to address the triple crisis of climate disruption, biodiversity loss and pollution, and the inclusive multilateral system anchored within the United Nations. At a time when multilateralism is giving way to unilateralism and globalization to deglobalization, de we have to unite to strengthen the role of the United Nations and bring our efforts together to attain the Sustainable Development Goals. Ladies and gentlemen, healthy people and healthy planet are two sides of the same coin. Without healthy people, there can be no healthy planet. Likewise, a cleaner and healthier planet ensures clean water, food and air for all, thus improving human health. Unfortunately, the Earth is suffering from global warming, ecological degradation, and all kinds of pollution. The COVID-19, the mid-term global crisis, is closely linked to the long, this long-term crisis of climate change and biodiversity collapse. Without dealing with these global issues, without protecting these global commons, humanity cannot survive, let alone prosper, even if we successfully overcome the coronavirus pandemic. As mentioned earlier, Internet technology and this innovative digital solution can not only support the international endeavors in effectively managing risks and tackling threat to humanity, but also accelerate global actions to achieve the SDGs and fully implement the Paris Climate Agreement.